Dear student, today you have chosen to read about functional areas of food service. If a food service has to run smoothly and successfully, the functional areas have to be chosen in such a way that they are efficient and improve work efficiency and they are able to bring about success. Today you have chosen to learn the lesson on functional areas of food service. When you finish, you should be able to understand what are the various functional areas in a food service, how they can be planned and integrated in a food service. Let us first start by knowing what is a functional area. A functional area is a grouping of activities or processes on the basis of a need in accomplishing one or more tasks. In a typical food service, the functional areas have to be planned in such a way that the integration of these areas should facilitate the accomplishment of objectives of the food service. The areas of food service for any institution is determined by a number of factors such as location of the food service, customer type and numbers, food and eating habits, likes and dislikes and purchasing power. In addition to these, the type of menus offered, customer turnover, service style, method and timings of service affects the time and size of spaces needed and accordingly the areas have to be designed. The food service space must accommodate several distinct areas for specialized equipments and space for general circulation. These areas include production, service and dining, receiving and storage. Let us see the areas one by one and the first is food production area. Food production areas generally refers to preparation, cooking, pantry and bakery areas. Equipments either as major and minor are typically kept in this area and the main space is allocated for the kitchen. A kitchen is an enclosed space in which edible food materials are brought together combined and cooked in different ways for consumption. It is the hub of food production activity in any institutional food service establishment. The space provided is not only planned as a work center for meal provision, but also acts as the area for social interaction of staff who come together for work from different cultural and educational backgrounds. Therefore, kitchen is the focal point for cleaning, storing, cutting, preparation, holding food materials and dishes in addition to washing up and waste clearing. How should a kitchen design and layout be planned? Planning kitchen spaces requires appreciable investment in the form of money for equipment, hiring staff with varied skills, energy, time and other material sources. It involves arranging work areas to minimize operating costs and maximize productivity which is an important activity for a food service manager. Kitchen design should focus on the overall space planning and include defining the size, shape, style and decoration of a space. Layout refers to the detailed arrangement of the equipment, floor space and counter space. One important factor to be considered in planning a kitchen and serving space is to have a straight line flow from receiving through wear washing. Based on the food service and the total space available, the size and type of kitchens may be planned. The size of the kitchen will vary according to the nature and amount of work to be done on it. The space allotted to a kitchen is approximately half that of the dining area but the ratio varies with the size and type of establishment and the menu pattern. For example, in a kiosk where ready-to-serve snacks are displayed for sale, an only preparation area consists of making fast foods like sandwiches, tea, coffee. The size of the preparation area will be very small compared to the area in a food service where meals have to be prepared and held hot or heated before serving. In large canteens, the size and shape of spaces provided for food preparation activity will be affected by the size and type of equipment, their placement 
and the kitchen area in relation to the receiving storage and service areas too large or too small kitchen space to accommodate the necessary equipment will lead to inefficiency in the use of space too small a space will hinder work because of overcrowding while too large a space will involve extra walking causing unnecessarily high fixed costs adversely affecting profitability a kitchen can take different shapes according to how much space is available in a building for the production and service of food and where the space happens to be located kitchens vary from square rectangle u l shaped parallel to a single or straight line with dimensions varying according to the need of the particular catering establishment the various types of kitchen may be square rectangle u l shaped and parallel kitchen let us see them one by one a square kitchen is common but as the distance from one wall to another is more and requires much walking at work it is planned according to the total space available it is also difficult to use the center space effectively except for an aisle or for odd jobs that may even come in the way of the main cooking and preparation activity a rectangular kitchen is very common shape in catering establishments and generally used where a lot of activity is undertaken for most of the day in large establishments where many are served and more space is required rectangular kitchens prove useful u shaped kitchens are the most efficient type being compact and step saving as you see in the diagram doors are located at the end of the u and the dining area around the three sides of the room the sink unit is placed in the end wall or inside the u with the window over it counters can be fixed to come down on either side and provide additional service space during peak hours and can be folded back against the walls after service hours now we move on to the l shaped kitchens the l shaped kitchens make use of two walls adjoining at right angles it is an efficient design where floor space is limited extra space can be created by use of revolving shelves installed in a cabinet at the base of cooking and sink units it is a very useful shape for small canteens kiosks tea and coffee shops next is parallel kitchen in parallel kitchens the sides of passages may be utilized while the center space acts and as an the passage may be slightly screened off on one side for service during peak hours this type of service is best suited to cafeterias of the self service type next is a straight line kitchen a straight line kitchen is useful arrangement for kiosk tea shop and the straight line kitchen can be used even for mobile vending units now next we move on to the receiving and storage areas the receiving and storage areas include docks or receiving areas general dry food storage ventilated storage and refrigerated and freezer storage storage involves arranging goods in specified areas within the spaces earmarked for particular materials till they are required for use by the production service or other departments the planned arrangements in a store are generally referred to as functional storage as it provides a facility which makes ingredients available for use with the least possible delay it consists of a complete process of receiving and handling materials and checking them for quality and quantity against orders placed and issuing them to various departments against requests made through requisition slips storage spaces need to be worked out according to the degree of perishability of the foods to be stored and the time period involved depending on the speed with food spoil they are classified as perishable semi perishable and non perishable foods and each type requires different types of storage conditions and this has to be kept in mind at the time of planning storage areas there are three important factors to be kept in mind when storage spaces are designed they are the type of food items to be stored 
the quantity of food items to be stored and the period of storage and finally the location of the storage area is decided. First is type of the food to be stored. Based on the menu offered in the food service, the type of food to be stored will differ. For example, if in the menu a lobster dish is offered, the lobsters have to be stored in a freezer storage and accordingly a walk-in freezer or a freezer equipment is used for storage. The second is storage quantity. The quantities of food to be stored are calculated from the rate at which each commodity turns over that is the rate at which it is used up. Once this is done, the amount of space can be allocated for each item in the store. The package size ordered will determine whether an item requires shelf storage or ground arrangements in terms of storage space. The third is storage period. The length of time for which each commodity is stored will be determined by shelf life of a product and its usage frequency. For example, tins of foods like custard powders and other processed foods may be stored for longer period than juices. Hence, perishable foods and foods which are used less frequently can be bought in smaller quantities. The storage or shelf spaces allotted therefore will vary accordingly. Foods like cereals, grains, sugar etc. require more space and are to be stored for a month while perishables like milk products, eggs and bread will be stored for a day or two. Foods like fruits and vegetables will not be stored except in the production centers where they would be delivered daily or once in two days and used up at the same pace. They are allotted in the main storeroom but be sent directly for use from the kitchen or the transit store. Now we'll move on to see the location of storage area. Storage area should be located as near the point of use of the stored commodity as possible. Small storages on the same floor as the kitchen or provision through built-in structures within kitchen itself may be used. These transit storages have two main advantages. Firstly, it enables the provision of ingredients and materials at a short notice when the demand for certain item goes up unexpected and meals items have to be prepared at short notice. And secondly, central storage facility makes it easier to control issues and stock levels. The key factors to consider while construction of storage spaces are as follows. Spaces should be accessible to roads so that deliveries are easily received without interference with other organizational activities. At the designing stage, care should be taken to ensure that storage spaces are not located over or near a boiler or hot water pipe running through or under them concealed. Care is necessary to ensure that traffic to and from stores does not interfere with kitchen or service activity. Now we move on to the different types of storages. First is the dry storage. Dry storage area provides orderly storage for foods which do not spoil easily or otherwise for the non-perishable foods. Cleaning supplies and pesticides should not be kept in the food storeroom. Floors of the dry storage should be slip resistance and easy to clean. Walls and ceilings should be impervious to moisture and should be easy to wash and repair. The storeroom windows should be opaque to protect foods from direct sunlight. Good ventilation is essential to assist in controlling temperature and humidity and preventing musty odors. Dry storage temperatures should be within a range of 50 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Equipment. The equipment used in storage area includes sectional slated platforms, delivery pallets and metal platforms with wheels. Adjustable metal shelving is desirable because it allows for various shelf heights and is vermin proof. Shelving must be sturdy enough to support heavy loads without collapsing and it should be located at least 2 inches from walls to provide ventilation. 
metal or plastic containers should be placed on dollies or have built-in wheels for ease of movement from one place to another. Ails between shelves and platforms should be wide enough for equipment with wheels. Products should be arranged in the storeroom according to a plan and every product should be assigned a definite place. Time can be saved if forms for checking inventory are designed to match the arrangement of products on the shelves. Next is low temperature storage. Perishable foods should be held in refrigerated or frozen storage for preservation of quality and nutritive value immediately after delivery and until use. The type and amount of low temperature storage required in a food service operation will vary with the menu and purchasing policies. Low temperature storage can be categorized into refrigerators, tempering boxes and storage freezers. Refrigerators are storage units designed to hold the internal temperature of food products below 41 degree Fahrenheit. Tempering boxes are separate units for thawing frozen foods specially designed to maintain a steady temperature of 40 degree Fahrenheit regardless of room temperature or product load and storage freezers are low temperature units for frozen foods that maintain a constant temperature in the range of 10 to 0 degree Fahrenheit. Humidity control is important for maintaining food quality in low temperature storage. A humidity range between 75 and 95 percent is desirable. If humidity is not sufficient, it causes evaporation and deterioration in food products such as wilting, discoloration and shrinking. Now let us see the facilities which should be available in a storage unit. Refrigerated units are used to store frozen foods, meats, poultry, dairy products and other perishable foods. Ideal storage temperatures vary among food groups and it is important to store foods according to type of food to preserve the quality of the products. Low temperature temp units are designed as walk-in or reach-in refrigerators or freezers in large operations in the production and service areas for dairy products and other perishables. In small operations, refrigerators and small freezers are installed due to less floor space. The floor and wall surfaces used should be smooth and non-absorbent. The floor level should be the same as that of the area in which the walk-in freezer is located to permit carts to be rolled in. Uniform ventilation and adequate lighting are essential in the unit to maintain sanitary conditions. All refrigerators and freezers should have one or more of the following kinds of thermometers, either a remote reading thermometer, recording thermometer or a refrigerator freezer thermometers. Temperatures in all units should be checked at least twice a day. The critical control storage. Storage can be critical control point for food items. The HACCP flow should be maintained as a microbial safety of raw food products in storage before production is critical. We move on to the third area, the distribution and service areas. Distribution involves getting food from production to the point of service or the dining area. Service is the presentation of food to the customer and is a major component of all types of food service operations. Dining areas typically can include entry, waiting, seating of customers and will be designed for customer comfort and will include aesthetic features such as ambient lighting and ventilation with durable finishes. A clear circulation plan within the dining area and around the dining area will allow for simultaneous circulation of patrons and staff. Distribution is a major concern in hospital food services in which patients are served in individual rooms located on many floors and often in separate buildings. Service takes many forms in a food service establishment from fine dining to cafeterias, vending or buffet. The method, speed and quality of the services provided 
impact the success of a food service establishment. Distribution of food from production to the customer depends primarily on four factors. Types of production system in use, degree of meal pre-assembly prior to service, physical distance between production and service, and amount of time between completion of production until the time of service. Foods prepared in conventional production and delivered immediately to the customer does not require distribution equipment. Apart from these areas, the general support areas can include but not limited to the areas where little food production is taking place such as pantries and kitchens for the administration and staff requirements. Food service space will include the areas for specialized equipment like pot wash, dish wash, garbage disposal and janitor service. So to conclude, though these facilities might differ from establishment to establishment, a sound and effective planning of space can minimize and prevent accidents and aid in proper utilization of space for the functions in a food service.